Good morning, everyone. My name is Namal Huck, and I'm from Lippy Taylor. And Lippy Taylor is a digital marketing and PR agency based in New York City. We specialize in medical aesthetics, and I lead the analytics team there. Over the past few years, my team has built a data science platform designed to analyze healthcare conversations using machine learning, and we're going to look at some of that data today. So I didn't always live in New York City. I actually, in 2010, was living in Louisville, Kentucky. You can tell that's true by the way I pronounce Louisville. It's named after the famous French king, Louis. And another thing that's known about Louisville is that it's the global capital of bourbon. Not that bourbon, but the bourbon on the screen was making the social media community buzz at the time when I was leading the team at Humana. And what bourbon did was compete directly with Foursquare as a location-based marketing service. When it first launched, it was kind of a mess. They had too many features, and they were trying to do too many things, poorly executed. And what they found out very quickly was that the one feature that everyone was using was the photo sharing application. They figured out what Hipstamatic and Facebook at that time hadn't realized was that people wanted to get to photos quicker than ever. So they stripped down the platform to enable people to post a photo in just three clicks, instantly, like a telegram. So they renamed it Instagram. And within two months, they had over a million users. Within a year, they had 10 million users. And today, they have over a billion users who have posted 50 billion images. What we see is that that trend in photo sharing is actually tapering off, though, which indicates a couple of things to us. One, the transition from photos to story sharing, which is video-based, and the, uh, the tendency of the audience to actually sit back and consume content and use it like a television rather than using it as a photo sharing social media application. So you're going to hear this a lot today. Everything is growing faster. There's billions of photos on a single platform. And photography has become our primary, primary means of sharing experiences with one another. What we see is that more HCPs are on the platform and more people are posting online aesthetic reviews. There's a decreasing stigma for sharing. And that's actually normalizing the procedures. So the market is growing. Just this year, we're going to see a 25% increase in non-invasive surgical procedures. There's an expanded definition of what beauty is, fueled by the body positivity movement that you've heard about previously among younger generations. And there's an increased variety in available procedures that's driven by the types of brands that you see sitting around you. So new generations are going to be introduced to new options. Allure earlier this year said that cosmetic procedures that are exaggerated are on their way out and that plastic surgery now needs to be no longer obvious. 72% uh, of plastic surgeons report seeing an increase in patients under 30. And according to ASAPs, since the turn of the millennium, there have been a 200% increase in minimally invasive cosmetic procedures. There's new nomenclature to describe this. The millennials are calling it prejuvenation because they have to have a term for everything. And these are people who want to have aesthetic procedures before they're even showing signs of aging. But humans are humans. Behavior is consistent. A 2016 study showed that Instagram selfies reproduce the traditional gender stereotypes seen in the media from the 1970s. This is imbalance in a selfie, or a feminine touch, or masculine posturing. Gendered sexualizations and selfies is more representative on Instagram than in the magazine advertisements we've seen from models over 40 years ago. And that recurrence, and that recurrence on this platform in particular, has led to a sea of sameness. Influencers like the Kardashians have set a certain standard for a look that's led to a homogenous appeal. But the rise of minimally invasive procedures set at odds with that trend. And what we see that the millennials are really wanting, which is to be unique more than anything else. And this caused an existential crisis. And this is being fueled by brands and doctors. When we see what plastic surgeons are posting on Instagram, it's like a laundry list of different aesthetic procedures that you can buy from them that they're then going to post on Instagram and share with their friends, which causes a repetition that I think is best exemplified by the, uh, by the channel Insta Repeat that showcases things like the struggle of standing on top of a mountain with the wind blowing in your hair. People go to social media to discover solutions for their own aesthetic needs. And yet, preferences will change. We see that 36% of women take 6 to 15 selfies before picking the perfect one today, right? It's all about getting that perfect image aided by Facetune and filters. 
But with the rise of video and stories and live streaming, people are going to want to go back to that natural baseline look since they can't be modified in the same way. There are over 500 million daily Instagram story users, and we see that this trend is present across all social media channels. So when people are coming to the office, they're now saying, give me that filtered look. Don't give me this magazine advertisement. Because what I'm seeing is that even in places like the UK, invasive cosmetic surgeries are down, and they're being replaced by less invasive procedures. So this map shows the concentration of influence globally from the Starling AI database. This is where the influencers live. And traditionally, we think that they're in New York or LA, but they're now being challenged by Londoners and Chicagoans and Parisians. This is democratizing the availability of aesthetic insight. And that balances the look that's presented by mainstream markets with the individualization that we see in other places. And we also know that the patient journey is long and well-researched. They're exploring different looks for years in advance, seeking the right doctor to get that perfect look. And they're more transparent than ever in going and sharing what it is that they found with their peers. This is a highly invasive cosmetic procedure. And a year before these patients are getting that procedure, they're going online and saying, I went and saw one doctor. Now I'm going to go see another one or another one and try and get a different perspective. So there's an opportunity for you here to address this patient fear that might curtail the journey. The top physicians talking about the word facelift are talking about data and research, whereas the patients are talking about scarring and their fear that the facelift might not last. Getting in there gives you a chance to shorten that patient journey and get the patient to convert more quickly. Because what we see HCPs are posting on Instagram is actually pretty misaligned with what the patient influencers are sharing. Right? They go to the doctor, they post the provider name, they show the after image, but they're not showing the needle actually going in. When I look at the Instagrams for a lot of people in this room, there's, there's quite a bit of blood and gore. And we know that the patients are actually seeing more surgeons than ever before. This is data that shows the number of patients who are reviewing two or more physicians. And the compound average growth rate of that trend is most increased among plastic surgeons, where people are not only seeing more specialized physicians, but they're shopping around, and they're going on Groupon, and they're trying things that they never thought they'd try before. So, what can you do about this? You've already proven, as physicians, that you have the capability to create influential networks, that you can inspire one another through the sharing of research and the shaping of the practice. These are people on Twitter, some of whom are in the room, that are influential among their peers, and they're engaging with academic institutions. So this information translates then to Instagram, where the patients live. So what can you do to influence the people on Instagram, too? We looked at 3,000 images from the top plastic surgeons and used computer-aided vision detection to find objects in those images that then correlated with likes and comments and other engagement factors on the platform. And the top 20 objects used by successful plastic surgeons and social media accounts had a 92% correlation with the objects that received the most likes. What this means for you is that the best plastic surgeons know what works and produce highly engaging content. And things that we might assume drive engagement, like showing a lot of skin, actually don't do as well as facial elements. So this model is replicable to you, right? The top doctors are out there showing that they know what works. The correlation is strong. They're going back and again and again posting content that features facial elements. So you can go online today and follow these doctors and learn what the best practice is. Go find your friends who have over 100,000 followers on Instagram. And what they've seen is that there's a diminishing return to variety on these platforms. Right? You definitely want to define your own look. You want to shape what it is your patients are understanding is the new aesthetic. But after a certain point, things that don't reflect chins and eyebrows and eyelashes and the rock putting his eyebrow up with his forehead and using hilarious memes because everybody wants to see entertainment on these platforms and showing before and after photos, you're going to get diminishing returns. So how does this play out for you? You know how to create great content now. We're going to look at dermatologic surgeon reviews. There's 15,000 reviews represented here. They're hierarchically clustered by the topic. And you can see in here there's facial plastic surgery, there's head and cosmetic procedures, there's hair transplants, there's acne treatments. And the lines between these nodes represent the language used by patients to describe these procedures that they've had. 
So when we think about the patient journey, when we filter this data, we start to see things that are really important, right? They talk about how they came to a decision to see a plastic surgeon. They talk about reading about doctors, about going and seeing what other patient experiences are, and going to the physician website. They talk about Googling, right? They search for doctors, they search for reviews, they want to find before and after photos. And this is true across all of these different nodes. In every topic of aesthetic surgery, they're considering their fears, their evaluation process, and sharing that with one another. And they do this online primarily. Even though these are online reviews, they want others to know that the resources are out there, particularly for acne and hair loss treatments. And they actually talk about influencers in their reviews, especially when that influencer is their doctor. And I think this is best exemplified by this next node, where we see that social media mentions in reviews cluster most highly around doctors who have a prom prominent social media presence. What this means for you is you have patients out there saying, go look at his Instagram and find the look that you've always been looking for. So let's recap. The market is growing and it's driven by minimally invasive procedures. These procedures are increasingly popular because Instagrammers are migrating back to a natural look. This return is supported by a transition from photo to video, Instagram, Snapchat, stories, and then increased access to patient reviews there is actually a support for Instagram disrupting the entire major market look industry because it's being democratized across new geographies. The patient is spending more time than ever researching the right doctor, finding the right treatment, and what they're finding online isn't really matching exactly what they're looking for. They're seeing a lot of blood and gore, and they're kind of liking it to a certain extent, but not really commenting because they don't know how to engage with it. They're visiting more doctors than they ever have before, and they love to see before and after photos, and they want to see the look that they have always been looking for to have on their own face through Instagram. So they'll go back online and review their journey and restart this cycle. My point is that this system is comprehensible, it's understandable, it's documented. And the key takeaway for you is that you too can be an influencer. I know this is what you wanted to hear, right? You can be an influencer. You can create lifelong patient relationships where your patients are saying, I love my doctor. I had a great customer experience. I engaged with their excellent team and that experience didn't end with the cucumber water in the waiting room. And I'm gonna tell all my friends about that experience because my doctor is online and engaged with me. They are talking with other physicians and sharing their research. They've grown their followership and they're discoverable because they're using the right hashtags that allow me to find them. I'm able to express my expertise and my artistry, my capability of providing a natural look, of providing minimally invasive surgeries, of safety and recovery, and that's reflected in the reviews that people are posting for you and it's reflected in your certifications and your designation as a top surgeon. So the opportunity for you is massive to go out and be an influencer. And I have just one last thing they want to ask for. Can I get a selfie? Is that all right? Can everyone just kind of band together and, and let's, uh, let's, let's do this. All right. Everybody say Botox. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, you've been amazing. Thank you.